Now let, let, let's come to kids, you know, um, brushing d d like deep down there, getting the brush there. Is it possible that kids would have bad breath? And then if you have to go deep down there to do it, I, would it have any implications or complications if you don't do it? Because barely would you be able to go down deep down when it comes to brushing the tongue of your children. Okay, so I want to first of all say that halitosis is not respect of persons. It affects all ages mm. of like of the society. So for children, no, normally the ideal toothbrush is angulated towards, is narrowed, it's tapered towards the tip. Okay, so it's not broader at the tip. So you should be able to go in down there. Most individuals suffer from what I mentioned as a gag reflex. You have yeah. the tendency to vomit yeah. or yeah. throw up, yeah, when you take in that. So you can wash off a little bit of the toothpaste, mm -hmm. which is causing the gag effect, and go in there. We actually have what we refer to as the tongue scraper, which are specially designed to clean the tongue. So in that case, it minimizes that, that um, discomfort that is associated with brushing. That so it's a must tongue. that everybody gets a tongue scraper then? Oh, it's highly recommended. Highly recommended. Yes, it is. So how, how do you use it? Do you use it um, after or before the brushing of the teeth? So it's normally used after brushing. So mm -hmm. when you check the required or the ideal toothbrush recommended for brushing, mm -hmm. you notice that there are some ragged edges. The, the side of the bristle, when you turn it to the other side, we have this rough, rough yeah, edges. On so the that back. mimics what we call as the tongue scraper. Okay, so you can, after brushing, you turn to the other side and use that to oh, brush so that's your what tongue. Is, it's useful? That's what it's used for, <laughs> actually. Really? Yeah. So viewers, there you have it. So the back of your toothbrushes, it's not a design. It's not just there for design's sake. It's actually the tongue scraper to help you scrub your tongue properly. Oh, wow, this is new. Okay, <laughs> very good. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so, or you can go ahead and get the specially designed device, that's the tongue scraper. Mm -hmm. They're available in the supermarket and the pharmacies as well. Okay, now let's come to causes. What causes halitosis? Okay, so, I, as I said, 80% of the causes of halitosis are due to poor oral hygiene. Okay, so that's the like practices. Yeah. There are other causes like food, certain foods we eat which are high in what we call the volatile sulfur compounds. They are the compounds that come out with that unpleasant smell in the mouth. Okay. So if you eat food that contains these compounds, examples are onion and mm -hmm. garlic. Onion okay. and garlic. Yeah. <laughs> right. You realize that people that normally take in garlic, even when they pass by you, have this, they smell have the smell on their and body. Aura around yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. It's because of these products. Okay. okay. They stay in the bloodstream for long and are excreted through our sweating skin mm. too. So certain diets can cause bad, bad breath too. Okay. You could also have certain medications that could cause bad breath. Alcohol and smoking, anything that causes dehydration in the mouth, less saliva flow will lead to an environment which is very conducive for these bacteria to feed on and produce these compounds. So fasting. Exactly. Fasting can cause bad fasting breath. Fasting may cause, once it's, it's creating the environment for the bacteria to act to produce these compounds, it will definitely lead to halitosis. So if I'm understanding you well, so the dryness of the mouth, so your, your mouth shouldn't be dry. Okay, so I think God in his best knowledge actually produced what and um, put in glands that produce saliva. Yeah. So saliva helps in cleansing the mouth, okay, okay, and reduces the bacteria's action on food. Okay. To cause these compounds. Okay. So there is a mechanism. It's either your mouth is dry, mm -hmm. there's dehydration, which is causing less saliva flow. Yes. Which creates an environment for these compounds to be produced. Mm -hmm. Or the bacteria eats on accumulated food substances, mainly at the posterior part at the posterior part of the tank right. to produce these compounds. Okay, oh. so it's a, what we call in medical terms, it's a pathophysiology, okay? Once the cycle, anything that contributes to that cycle will lead to these compounds, which will generate that offensive smell. Mm. Okay. So is it possible that you brush your, te your, your tongue very well, but you don't really focus on your teeth? Is it possible that you wouldn't have bad breath? that the main focus is that you have to you just have to get the tongue right and you're good no it's not possible so apart from the tongue these bacteria to reside in the pockets within the gum 
We call uh -huh. them the periodontal pockets. Okay. okay. Once they reside in there, so they can still cause these offensive smell. Okay. And certain infections in the sinus, the empty spaces in the head, also generate bad breath. You know, when it comes to halitosis, there are varied causes. So as a clinician, we try to exclude and try and target the main cause in an individual who presents to the clinic. Then we can address it and treat it. So maybe the cause of halitosis in one individual will differ from the cause of halitosis in another individual. Okay, so it's actually a step-by-step -step approach. So 